Hello and welcome back to Tiny House Off Grid Resources. This is video four in the series Making Your Own Free Diesel from Waste Plastic. In the previous videos, I've shown you how the system will work and we've looked at various aspects of the machine as I've built them. We're nearing the end of the build now. After this, we've only got the um, control and monitoring systems to put in. Today we'll be finishing the plumbing. One thing I want to make sure is that nobody loses their marbles today. I've got my marbles in a container and the rest of my marbles have already been put into a reflux tube. It's a novel idea but I figure that putting marbles down the reflux tube will achieve two things. Number one, it's going to create a restriction in the outlet to the reaction chamber and that will help build pressure. We're only looking for three or four pounds per square inch, but that small increase in pressure will improve the pyrolyzation by holding the long chain hydrocarbons in the chamber until the heat has broken them up and only the short chain hydrocarbons of between five and eight atoms long will be allowed to rise and actually climb out of the top of the reflux tube. Once the short chain hydrocarbons have climbed to the top of the reflux tube and gone over the high point in the system, they're then encouraged to expand in this chamber, which is uh, four times the volume per millimeter or per inch of the original tube. That expansion creates condensation. The condensation will uh, gather on the walls of this expansion chamber and then will drip down the end into the condenser which is then going to cool it down and turn it into the product that we've been looking for. In this view, you'll see that the uh, expansion chamber is dropping the contents into a small turbo diesel intercooler, which has been salvaged from a mid-2000s pickup truck, turbo diesel. This will be filled with water, which is going to cool the intercooler and that water that's in here will be picking up the heat from the 370 degree ga gases which are heading into here so that water is going to get hot fairly quickly the water is going to be circulated with a electric pump and passed through the radiator that you can see here and that will cool the water and dump it back in to the other side of the container here now I'm still to make a flange to fit this part here, but as the diesel is cooling, it runs out of the bottom and runs down here into this part. These fl this flange will be connected with one underneath and the product will then move through the bottom of this bath and will then connect to the rest of the plumbing here where it will travel through the sight glass and we can control the destination of the liquid between the two containers using the valving system here. In the next video we're going to be looking at the control systems and the monitoring systems. We'll be fitting um, thermocouple temperature readouts. The uh, pressure gauge will be tested to make sure that I am achieving the three to four pounds per square inch pressure that I'm looking for inside the reaction chamber. And I've had a little bit of spare space so I've put this handy um, whiteboard on the machine which allows me to keep an eye on the temperature and we'll keep a keep a record of the temperature at various parts of the machine while I collect samples and those samples will then 
be logged and I'll be able to keep a tally of results and just see how much time at what temperature gives me the results closest to what I'm looking for. So it's getting pretty exciting now. Um, it won't be long. We'll be firing this machine up on a regular basis and pyrolyzing waste plastic and creating batches of sulfur-free diesel. So thanks once again for uh, dropping in and seeing what we're doing today. This has been uh, Tiny House Off-Grid Resources. If you found the video useful, please hit the like button and you'll find the button for subscribing down in the bottom right hand corner. It's that bright green one on the corner of the screen. See you next time.